G'day and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to make this easy crochet water bottle holder and these water bottle covers can be made at any size you like so they're very easy to adjust the pattern to make it the size of the water bottle that you already have. There will be a free written pattern located on my website and I will leave a link for you in the description box below the video. So let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies we are going to need a yarn needle with a large eye, a pair of scissors, I love these scissors. If you would like to grab a pair of your own then I'll put a link in the description box below. They are so cool, like rainbow unicorn scissors. You're going to need your drink bottle, I've just got a uh, plastic bottle it did have water in it but I'm just going to use that for today but you can use this for any size drink bottle don't worry if yours is bigger than mine it doesn't matter we can resize this to make it work really easy to do you're going to need your yarn today I'm going to be using ice yarns forgive the label that's on this it's seen better days and this is magic light it is a number three weight yarn, a DK, an eight ply, but you can use a worsted weight, a 10 ply or an Aran weight yarn. Here are all the details for you. 100 grams is approximately 3.5 ounces of yarn. You will only need one ball and you're probably gonna need less than one ball. This yarn is made in Turkey. I love ice yarn, I really do, and I get it all the time sometimes a bit too much but we can grab this on the ice yarns website and I'll put a link for you in the description box below and that is an affiliate link all that means is if you do make a purchase through that link I get a little commission and helps these videos coming out for you you're going to need a crochet hook to go with your yarn this is because it's little, little words because this is an eight ply a DK or a number three weight yarn it recommends a four or a G size crochet hook and we're going to need four stitch markers. So to start off, as you can see, this ball has been around the block. It is all falling apart, but I'm going to try and pull from the inside because I like to do that. Look at that. There is the end. Easy as that. Do have a little bit of yarn bath or yarn vomit. But hey, we can, oh, look at those colors. They are so pretty. They are screaming sunrise. So if you are joining us and it is December, 2023, this is our Christmas Eve crochet party. That's the correct term. <laughs> and what we do is we all make the same project. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You start it on Christmas Eve. And it's about being part of the crochet community and how we connect through crochet. So we're going to do a slip knot, pop that on your hook, doesn't matter how you do slip knot, just bang it on there. You could also start with a magic ring or a magic circle, whatever you call it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to chain four. You could chain five if you find that easier or again you can use the magic ring. And we're going to slip stitch to the very first stitch and we're going to pull that yarn through and that will join that yarn. With the chain four it does leave a little tiny circle so if you find that's too small or maybe you're a beginner then chain five is much easier to work with. And if you crochet over your tail you can cinch the little hole small if you need to. So we're going to chain up three. You can use a alternative method for this if you if you prefer to do that then that's totally fine. And we're going to work three double crochets into the middle of the ring. You are going to need to know how to do a double crochet for this project. You could work this in half double crochets if you wanted and you could probably work it in single crochet. You know what, you could even work it in triple crochet. I think this is going to work with pretty much any basic stitch. Uh, as long as you've got your stitch count the same as me, I can't see a problem why it wouldn't work. You know what, I want to try one in treble, in treble crochet. That's an American treble. So that would be a double treble Australian so we want to do one more double crochet. Sorry, I'm getting totally sidetracked. Making up new cro crochet patterns as I crochet along with you. And we're going to put a chain two. This is how this pattern actually came about. I was making, we're going to do four double crochets, <coughs> excuse me, four double crochets into the ring. This is how this pattern came about. I was making my solid granny square bottom bag and I'll put a photo or something on the screen now so you can see what I'm talking about. 
and this idea came up because I literally I just finished that bag and I had to take a drink bottle with me somewhere I can't remember where it was now I had to take a drink bottle somewhere with me and I was like this is just annoying trying to hold it I need something to put it in so I can just like wear it it would save so much time so we're going to do two chains and work four more double crochet into the ring. So yeah, it's funny how you create one pattern and whilst you're doing that, you're creating another one. Or it sparks ideas for another one. So four double crochet. And chain two. What do we got? We need four all together. One, two, three. We need to do another set. So that's four double crochet into the middle. So this is pretty much like a start of a regular granny square, just the traditional ones. Except we've got four stitches instead of three. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to chain two. And then we're going to join to the very first stitch. So for me, it was a chain three. You may have an alternative stitch to me, but totally fine. You're just going to join in the top of that. So we're going to put our crochet hook under two loops. And that gives you a more secure join. So I'm just making sure I've got the right amount of stitches. That looks good to me. So just for this round, we're going to slip stitch over to the chain two space. So we're going to slip stitch in the next one, two, three stitches and then also that chain two space there. So we're going to go to the top of the stitch there and we're going to pull through and pull through. Don't have too much tight tension on this because we want it to be loose. We don't want it to pull our stitches close together. So I've got no tension. It's literally just running through my fingers and then we're going to chain, uh, we're going to slip stitch into there. And we're going to make a chain three or an alternative double crochet or if you're doing a single a double a treble whatever stitch you're doing do the amount of chains or whatever you need to do to start off and into that chain two space which is here because we did a chain two on the previous round in that chain two space we are going to work one double crochet chain two and two double crochets into that same chain two space. And that is our corner. So when we crochet across this straight edge here, we want to pay attention to the very first stitch. Now, if you haven't done a solid granny square before, you will have to pay attention. But after you've done a few rounds, you'll totally get it. You could use a stitch marker and put it in there every time you do that stitch. I don't need to because I know what I'm looking at but this stitch here is our first stitch and that hole there if you can see it, that hole there, that is where we need to crochet into. So that hole right there is the top of that very first double crochet. If we forget that first stitch and it is easy to crochet over it when you do your corner if we forget to do that stitch it will make our stitch count off and it'll make the sides of your project um, not be the same as the other ones unless you do that same mistake every time <laughs> on every every section but you shouldn't so two double crochet into the chain two space which is here chain two and what I like to do is I grab hold of those two stitches grab hold of that section and I just pull it around slightly and that pulls it away your crochet away from that first stitch so if I if I just not pay attention and crochet and let me see if I can do it you'll see that the stitch where the hole was is has disappeared because I've crocheted over it but if I just tug that to the side, this appears and that's where we're going to crochet into. Can you let me know if this sparkly nail polish is 
um, distracting because it's Christmas here. It is, what is the date today? I think it's like the 19th or the 20th. And I've got my Christmas nails done and then I realised I had to make a tutorial. So I'm hoping it's not too... Oh, my light's going... Light's going uh, flat. I need to just turn that down. It blinks when it, needs, when it goes flat. Yeah, so hopefully it's not distracting because I wanted to get my nails done for Christmas. And who doesn't love sparkly gold nail polish? And it even has a little snowflake. It doesn't stand out very much, but it's a little snowflake. And the hilarious thing about that, that was my phone beeping, the hilarious thing about that is Christmas time in Australia is summer. And currently, right now, it is 30 degrees outside. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, so I'm going to put that on the screen for you. Uh, yeah, and I am crocheting our Christmas project and also have snowflakes on my fingers. So it's uh, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in the corner. Yeah. If you live in America, England, Europe, all those places where it's cold at Christmas, that must sound so weird. It sounds weird to me saying it's cold at Christmas. Christmas for me is hot and it's quite gross sometimes. <laughs> so here is our very first stitch of the of the side. So we're going to double crochet in there then each stitch across. Sorry, I've just split my yarn there. So I'll just fix that up. So this is this yarn is a premium acrylic, so it is nice. It's a nice yarn. My hands are sweaty. It is late, well, mid to late December, and my hands are sweaty. <laughs> I know how weird that sounds for some people. Because you're probably like, it is not sweaty here, it is freezing cold. So we've got four stitches left here, and just on this round, we're going to have to crochet into those uh, slip stitches. Or, hang on, no, you can actually crochet into the stitch. There is space there for a stitch. So we'll go through. And we'll crochet into those. You'll have four stitches all together. I'm getting like total sunrise or sunset vibes with these colours. One, two, three. That's the third chain and we're going to join with a slip stitch. Fix that up there. Looking good. Okay, so at this moment, if you've got thicker yarn, grab your drink bottle and place it on top of your square. Now, this would probably work, these two rounds, for this drink bottle. This drink bottle is really narrow. Let me get my gigantic drink bottle. So this holds two litres, which is 64 ounces. This is a two litre drink bottle. This is a, I think it's like a five, I don't know. It's about a 500 mil. So it's obviously, what's that? Like a quarter of the size. So if you, oh no, maybe my back drop wet. If you're using this one, that is obviously way too small because what we want to do is make it to it's the width of our drink bottle. But if we were doing it for this one, then that would probably work because crochet does give. I think it's going to work for this drink bottle, but I am actually going to make it one round bigger so that you can see what I'm going to do if you need to make more rounds. So we'll, yeah, well, I'm just going to go one more. It's probably going to be too big for this drink bottle, but it doesn't matter because I have multiple drink bottles. Anybody else? We have one mouth, but I think I own about six drink bottles. You can actually just excuse that till it dries. It won't take long because, like I said, it's hot. Okay, so if you need to do another round, what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch and we want to slip stitch over to this chain two space here, but we only have to slip stitch into this stitch here and then the chain two space because we have joined in a different spot. 
So we're going into the top of the next stitch for a slip stitch. Again, don't put any tension on it, just make it loose. And that one as well. And we're going to start our round again. So you totally know how to do that, but I'm going to show you anyway. So it is a chain three or alternative double crochet if you like. And then one double crochet into the chain two space. Chain two. And then I just like to scoot that across. Uh, I can hear something tapping. I think it's my neck bracelet. Let me just fix that. Uh, where was I? So we've done our chain two and then two double crochets into that chain two space. Yes, it is December. We're going to go the 20th. I don't actually know. Hang on, six more sleeps. Does that make it the 19th? Um, my niece is reminding me how many sleeps we have. Um, and I'm sitting in shorts and a crop top because I am hot. Into each stitch across, including the one that always tries to hide on us, we are going to put a double crochet in each stitch. My bracelet is still tapping. My friend bought me the bracelet for my birthday, which was in September. That's really pretty. Has a little sapphire on there because that's my birthstone. And then has a little C for Claire. Oh, no, no, it's totally C for crochet. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Alrighty, so we come up to our chain two space and oh, that is really bugging me. Let me just try and fix it. Chain two space, so we need to do two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets into that space. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. We're going to work our way around doing double crochet all the way across. And into the corners, it is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Pause the video and I'll see you when we are ready to join. Coming up to the end of the round and I have one, two, three chains there. And I want to join into that third chain, which is the top one. Or your very first stitch, depending on what you've got. And I'm going to pull that through to make a slip stitch. Starting to change colour again. Yay! Okay, so... That is big enough to fit my drink bottle. You can see it's actually going to be too big. But I, I this drink bottle I do not use when I take it out. I was out and about, forgot my drink bottle, and I had to buy one. So this is quite a small, small version. Take my hook out so that doesn't unravel. And we're going to grab our stitch markers. Now if you have made my solid granny square bottom bag, which is what I was talking about before, then you will know how to do your decreases. Don't worry if you haven't made it, it totally doesn't matter. But if you make this, it is almost identical to that pattern. It's just we do a different amount of rounds and we measure it differently. So same method, different outcome. So what we need to do now, it doesn't matter where, what side we start on, I'll go over here so that tail doesn't confuse you. And what we're going to do is we're gonna go from our corners, So our chain two corner is there. I'm just going to stick my finger and thumb in there and that one. And we're going to count across until we have four stitches in the middle and we need to leave those vacant. So it won't be very many because obviously we haven't got many stitches. If yours is bigger than this, you might have a few more stitches. It doesn't matter as long as you've got four in the middle. So I don't actually count. I just go grab one stitch there, grab one stitch there. I know I've got one. Do it to the next one, do it to the next one. Grab the next one, grab the next one, grab the next one, grab the next one. And you can see I have four stitches that are vacant. Grab your stitch marker. What I like to do, just to make it easier, is I just mark the center two stitches. So we, that's our first one, this one and this one. We're going to put a stitch marker in that way. Get in there. And then also around the next one so we're just going to come from the back to the front 
through the next stitch we've just marked the center two stitches but we're going to skip four it just if you can mark the four stitches then you go for it but i just find that a little bit easier to see when i'm crocheting so again we're going to do the same thing so one two three four so i've skipped four stitches on both sides and i've got four stitches left so then i'm going to mark the two in the middle which is this one and then i can come back through the back to the front can you see that I've just mark two stitches and then we're gonna ooh, put that on there so that's two done if you're if you're clever and you can count and not worry about stitch markers you can go for that as well but i cannot because i get sidetracked very easily two three and four again i've got four stitches left over there mark the center two stitches sorry i'm trying not to get my hand in the way so you can see what i'm doing put that in there just need to undo this one and then this one where are we got there and there so one two three and four this is when you find out if you've skipped stitches or not because you won't have the right stitch count so i'm going to mark the center two that's that one there this stitch marker does not open very wide Let me hang on grab another one that's better okay i'm just going to redo that because now i'm lost one two three and no that's not it <laughs> one two three and four that's better i thought for a second i may have done a wrong amount of stitches so in and then back around like i said you can mark the four stitches if you like but i find that it just makes it go funny and it's a bit harder to see I don't want to make it as clear as possible for this tutorial so let's put that back on there so what we need to do now is just continue on like we were before putting our chain two sorry our two double crochet chain two two double crochet in the corners and then double crochets on here and it's just when we get to our stitch marker that it's going to be ever so slightly different so slip stitch slip stitch into the chain two space work your chain three or your alternate no alternative uh, double crochet and work one double crochet in there chain two Let's shift that over there and two double crochets in the chain two space make sure you remember that first stitch there and now what we're going to do because we've marked the center two stitches and we want to skip four we need to stop I'll just put one more stitch in and I can show you so we've marked this stitch we need to leave that next one we need to leave that vacant so that would make so it's two marks so that'd be one two three and then we're going to leave the one after the stitch marker vacant so that's our four stitches so we're going to double crochet so we yarn over we skip the next one the two marked the next one for a total of four and we double crochet in the next stitch so in there and then we're going to double crochet all the way across i'm getting really hot <laughs> you cannot tell that but i am And then into our chain two corner space we're going to work our corner two double crochet chain two and two double crochet Ooh, purple yarn purple hook matchy matchy there we go so again we're going to double crochet across until we get to oops We need to have one stitch before the stitch marker left. I think it's 
getting hotter in this room. It really is. Okay, so we've got these two marked. So we want to leave this one vacant. So I've crocheted into there. Going to yarn over. Going to skip this stitch. Skip the two marked. Skip the next one. And in the next stitch, we work a double crochet. Make sure you have some tension on here. Otherwise, this will leave a loose loop and it will look really weird. And then we are going to double crochet all the way across. Sorry, that noise is the stitch marker tapping on the table. So we've got two double crochet, two chain and two double crochet in the corner. And we're going to double crochet in each stitch, leaving the one before the stitch marker, so that dark purple stitch there, leaving that vacant. So for me it's one, two, three, four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to skip, so I've yarned over, we're going to skip the one before the stitch marker, skip the two that the stitch marker is marking, skip the one after, so that's four stitches, and then double crochet in the next. I just pinch there, and it just makes me, reminds me so that the stitch before my fingernail, that's where I've got to put my crochet hook. Go away stitch markers, you're annoying. And crochet into there. So crochet all the way across. Oh my goodness, who is making that noise? Go away. <laughs> Sorry, it's really hard not to get them on the table. I'm trying to hold them up, but it's not working. In the corner, two double crochet. Chain two. And two double crochet this stitch marker. Is, they come out on the next round, so it's, it's not too far away. Bear with me. Okay, so we're going to just repeat that all the way around. Double crocheting across, skipping those four stitches, double crochet across. So complete that last section. Pause the video and I'll see you when we're ready to join. So we have our crochet. You'll notice it's starting to look like a weird shape. And it should look like a weird shape because it's starting to form the sides of our drink bottle. So as you can see, that will be slightly too big again. Like I said before, I don't use that drink bottle. It was literally just an example of what we need to do. So now we can take those stitch markers out. I am going to take them out because they are driving me up the wall, tapping on the table. If you are a beginner, I would suggest putting your stitch markers, you could move them up each row and you could put them where we've created this hole here, put it around the hole that's there, put that around there, that will remind you to do the decreasing as we get to it. Or if you're watching your favourite TV show, also do that because I get distracted, don't mention I get distracted easily. Get distracted and I'm just crocheting all the way across and forget the decreases. Ask me how I know. So we are just going to slip stitch into the chain two space. Come on. Get on there. And we're going to do our chain three or an alternative double crochet. One double crochet in the chain two space, chain two and double crochet, two double crochets I should say, into that chain two space. So we have our stitches there. It is definitely getting hotter in this room. <laughs> so now we are crocheting across, please send me some snow, crocheting across. But what we're going to do instead of we're still skipping four stitches, but it's just slightly different. So I'm going to show you what to do. So crochet until two stitches on this side are left vacant. So that is 
one, two, three, four stitches for me, you may have a different number. If you do more rounds, then you will have more stitches. Ooh, there's a wasp. Yikes. No thanks. I don't like wasps, by the way. And we're going to double crochet across. Don't forget we want to leave two stitches vacant on this side of the space there. So we've got two stitches, we're going to leave those. And then on this side, we're going to leave two stitches. And we're going to crochet into the next stitch. So I've yarned over already. I'm going to skip this one, this one, this one, and this one. For four stitches and crochet in the next. The wasp is still in the room. It's too high up to get it. And we figured if we just leave it there, it won't get annoyed. <laughs> it's on the other side of the room. Chain two. So I've done my two double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochet into the chain two space. One double crochet across. Don't forget we have to leave two stitches this side of the space for our decrease. Here we go, we've got our decrease space. We want to leave these two stitches, so we yarn over, skip one, two, three, four, into the fifth stitch. We are going to oops, work a double crochet. Double crochet across to the chain two space. Oh my yarn's changed colour. Uh, <laughs> words. What am I saying? Two double crochet. <laughs> oh, did I mention it's hot? Two, a chain two and two double crochet in the chain two space. If I'm going too fast for you, you can adjust the speed settings on YouTube. Tap your screen if you're on a phone and go to settings cog. Or if you're on a PC, I think it's underneath the video screen, there'll be a settings cog. Click on that and it'll give you some speed options. You can slow me down or even speed me up. So we're going to double crochet across to our decrease. Leaving two stitches empty. Ooh, it's changing again. So here we go, we've got our decrease space there. So we want to leave these two stitches and those two stitches vacant. So we're going to skip the next four. One, two, three, four. Into the fifth, we're going to double crochet. I may at any time run away from the camera again because I am listening for the wasp to fly. <laughs> I don't think you saw it on camera, but it was literally in front of me on the wall. So like there, but higher up. In the corner, uh, two double crochet. Chain two. And two double crochet. So we're going to pre... Words. I'm going to repeat this all the way around. So as we go, it will literally form the sides of our water bottle holder. See it's starting to come up on the sides there. And we're going to repeat this last round for as many rows as we need. Let's grab that drink bottle. To, to come up to the height of our drink bottle, where it starts to taper off, depends on the drink bottle really, just up to whatever height you want yours. So if I was making it for this one, I'd do it to about there. You don't want it all the way up because it kind of hides the top of your drink bottle and it would make it kind of tricky to drink. So you do want it slightly shorter. But yeah, you're going to repeat this row that we're doing now until we have the height of our bag. Pause the video and I'll see you when we are ready for the next step. Welcome back. I have finished the amount of rounds that I want to do for the height of mine. I have done, let me just count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine rounds of the decreasing and that has brought that up to about there so like I said before this is a small bottle so I've just made it slightly taller than where it tapers off and that will fit the other bottle that I normally use I love how these rainbow colors are working up it's so cool now on my bag because so we're, now, we're now up to the handles and on when I did my bag I didn't do a round of single crochet all the way around it went uh, so let's just put our water bottle holder like that I had single crochets on this section and this section but there weren't any single crochets down in the dip there down in that part there so if you want single crochets all the way around go now and work around a single crochet that's completely up to you I find that it doesn't need it but it's just a personal thing if you want it there or not if you don't then it doesn't matter so I'm gonna because I've got a chain two space I'm gonna put two slip stitches in there and then into that very first double crochet I'm going to chain one and I'm going to go back in I'm going to work a single crochet so pull up a loop yarn over pull through I'm just going to grab a stitch marker I'm using yellow because it matches the yarn what well, does it match it looks good with the yarn so that will just remind me that's where I've started my round of crochet so I'm going to double crochet uh, sorry single crochet across when we get to the part where we would normally skip stitches just single crochet across so there are no skipping stitches on this part and then when we get to the next chain two space that's when we start our handles but like I said if you want to go and put a round of single crochet and then you can totally do that and what we're going to do is a foundation double crochet into here but it's going to be ever so slightly different so yarn over we're going to go in there yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through make our chain grab onto that yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two we're going to start that again so we're going to go into a chain stitch which is just here if you know how to knit <laughs> what is with my words today if you need to know how to do a foundation double crochet i will put a link up here in the corner of the screen so you can go and check it out but this is slightly different when we start off so we're going to go into that chain there which is right there we're going to yarn over we're going to pull through to make a loop yarn over pull through and that makes our very first chain just there I just like to hold on to that so I know where it is yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through two loops again we're going to start our foundation double crochet so yarn over go into the chain make sure you've got two loops so you've oops two loops yarn over pull up yarn over pull through that's made your chain don't make your chain too tight otherwise it's harder to get in on the next bit yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two again yarn over go into the chain which is just here where I've been holding on to yarn over pull up a loop yarn over make your chain grab onto that chain yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and continue on until you have the amount of chains that you need for your handle if this is your second handle you would have counted how many you did for the first one if you haven't go and do it now and then make the same amount of stitches on this side see how that has that has got such a needed join that versus there's the other one that can you see the difference <laughs> this bit like what is like out in the middle of nowhere what's it even doing 
uh, yeah, so that's how I figured out to make that much more of a needed join. But if this is your first handle, you wouldn't have seen, you don't see in this video how I did that one. It's after I'd done it, I just went, what is that? So we're going to insert this information so that you have it lovely, lovely, instead of what the heck. <laughs> Pause the video, complete your handle, and I'll meet you when we are ready to join. I don't even know. See this stitch here? I don't know what's happened to that, but it's all weird. Who knows? Who knows what I've been doing? So what we're going to do for, to join it to make it secure, and we don't have to come back and stitch it later, what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, so your very last stitch is going to be where we're going to join it. So if you need to take one stitch out, then that's fine. But on your last one, what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over, we're going to go into the chain stitch. Then we are going to go into our chain two space, grab our yarn, pull through the chain two space, pull through... And we're going to make our chain like normal for our foundation double crochet. And we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we've finished that one. Then we're going to single crochet into the first stitch there. So we're going to go into there. See, my stitch is weird. I don't know what happened. I can't even find where to put the crochet hook. No, I've not been paying attention there. I'm too far along to pull it out now. So there we're going to do a single crochet. So we're going to single crochet into that very first stitch and then into the next double crochet. Even this next double crochet looks completely weird. I have not been paying attention. Single crochet. Look, there's a massive hole. Like, what is what is that? <laughs> okay, this is just for me. <laughs> and then we get a single crochet across. I'm just grabbing my thing, and we're going to single crochet across till the next chain two space. I'll just leave the camera going so you can see what I'm doing. And then we're going to start our next handle. You want to count the stitches that you made on your first handle. I think mine was 140. Or was it 130? I need to count that again. So to start this, we're going to not... So before, I single crocheted into here. And that's what made that... Like this weird bit that what is that I will have to come back and sew that down so there's a more secure join so we're not going to single crochet into there and what we're going to do is a foundation double crochet into here but it's going to be ever so slightly different so yarn over we're going to go in there yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through make our chain grab onto that yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two we're going to start that again. So we're going to go into our chain stitch, which is just here. We're going to yarn over. We're going to pull through to make a loop. Yarn over, pull through, and that makes our very first chain just there. I just like to hold on to that so I know where it is. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Again, we're going to start our foundation double crochet so yarn over go into the chain make sure you've got two loops so you've oops two loops yarn over pull up yarn over pull through that's made your chain don't make your chain too tight otherwise it's harder to get in on the next bit yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two again yarn over Go into the chain, which is just here where I've been holding on to. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, make your chain. Grab onto that chain. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And continue on until you have the amount of chains that you need 
for your handle if this is your second handle you would have counted how many you did for the first one if you haven't go and do it now and then make the same amount of stitches on this side pause the video complete your handle and i'll meet you when we are ready to join so I finished my handle and what I want to do is make sure that it's not twisted. So you want to make sure it lays flat, lays flat, lays flat, and then we're going to join it. So I'm up to the second last stitch of what I want on my handle. So I'm up to 100, uh, 139 stitches. So my last one, which is my 140th stitch, we're going to incorporate it into this chain two space. So you can see there, that's where it goes at the top, that's where our increases are, that's where our decreases are. We're on to the next increase, chain two space. Okay, do you, so to join it to our chain two space, we're going to yarn over. We're going to go into our chain, where we've been going before. We're going to go into the chain two space with our crochet hook and pull through a loop. We're going to yarn over and make a chain and then yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and we are going to work a single crochet down into here and then do a slip stitch to join into this very first stitch because it had a stitch marker in there and then that is joined our handle to our chain to space now if you want to you can work more rounds around your bag let me just grab that out of there you can work more rounds so you can single crochet around and then you could single crochet onto the handles ignore this bit here this is where i went wrong and i refilmed it so I just need to fix that myself. You can see here this join did not work <laughs> when I joined the handles. This one is much better. Alrighty, that's our bag pretty much finished. Like I said, you can work more rounds if you want. I'm not going to because I just want it to be like that. Cut off my yarn and pull that through. And then you want to sew it in your ends. Now, on the one I did for my practice, the cut the camera is probably not going to like this colour. This was my practice one. And what I've done is I've joined. This is the top, so this is my bag. Uh, sorry, my bottle cover. And I've got my handles. And at the top, I've literally just joined the handles together, so that they sit nicer on your shoulder. So we can do that now. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can count your stitches to make sure they're even, but with the other one, I did not. So I'm not going to do that again. So I'm going to lay my handles down so that they are flat and they're not twisted at all. So do this to the other one. Okay, they're both flat. And then I'm just going to keep my hand here and then just pull gently on that end and that will make them line up so they're both even. And I'm just going to put a stitch marker where the middle is. Like I said, you can count your stitches. I haven't bothered. This one's for me, so if it's slightly out, I am not going to notice. So if anybody else notices, they're obviously too close to me. <laughs> And we're going to join these together. You could sew it together. So you could use a yarn needle and then just stitch. So you would whip stitch, which means over and then to the back, to the front, over, to the back, to the front, over. Whip stitch it. If you don't know what that is, you can easily Google. We'll do a YouTube search. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count 10 stitches to the right, or, you know, to one side where you're going to start your crochet. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to count 
10 stitches on this handle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I'm going to put my crochet hook through there as well. I'm going to pick up my yarn, put my yarn tail to the back. I'm just going to do a slip stitch across. So I'm going to grab that yarn, pull it through. Whoops. Grab the yarn, pull it through. Can you hear those birds? I don't know what's going on outside. They're not happy. And then I'm just going to go through the front and through the back. I'm going to do a slip stitch. And then when you get to your stitch marker, you are going to do the same amount of stitches on the other side. So I chose to do 10 stitches, so you're going to do 10 stitches on the other side. And actually using this different colour, you can see exactly where I'm going. And see that's joining that together if you've got a different method of joining it then go for it it's about making this pattern your own let's take this out Ugh, more thumbs and then we're going to do 10 stitches on this side as well so i've just got to do this next one because that's the one where the stitch marker was and then I'm going to count 10 stitches on this side as well. So I'm going through all the loops there. You could try just doing the loops that are, so you could do the back loop of this purple row, and then you could do the front loop of this orange row. You could try it like that, so you've just got one of each. You can mix it up. Go across if you like it, keep it. If you don't, go back, do it again. It's only like 20 something stitches, so it's not going to matter. And guess what? I've totally lost count. I have no idea how many I need to do. <laughs> I could go back and watch the video and that will tell me, but I'm just going to guess. I reckon I can do one more and that'll be about it. Like I said, it's for me. No one's going to notice. Okay, so we need to cut off our ends. Well, technically it's an end because there's no only one. And just pull that yarn through. And you can see that our two handles are joined together there. That's what it looks like underneath. That's what it looks like on top. You could do both sides if you wanted to. I didn't. Did I do it? No, I didn't on the other one. So, and I know that works because I've used it. Uh, just grab my yarn needle. And then I would sew this one to the back. So I'd peg it through. So that it disappears. And then just hide it under some stitches. You could even hide it under those green stitches there. Which you, you probably have a colour that's the same colour as your yarn. Speaking of colours, let me know what colour you've used. I would love to know. And what yarn did you choose to make it with? Great project for using up leftover yarn. Did not take much at all. You could use little pieces of yarn and just crochet until it's as far as it goes. And then add another colour do it that way. I love these scissors, they're lovely and sharp. If I get it to cut the right spot. <laughs> they are sharp, I just didn't have it properly. And then sew this one the other way. <laughs> what is that bit? Is that what I just did? Wow, Claire. How long have you been sewing in ends? So share your creations on my Facebook group. I would love for you to join us over there. There is a link for you in the description box below. Loving the colours on this. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, 
happy crochet